Hi guys, welcome back to Inner Sanity. I'm Jennifer, and today for Friday, I'm going to be starting something new on my channel, uh, something I'm going to call Friday Faves. And I was looking around at my books and trying to decide which faves I should talk about, and I started picking out all these books, and they had a theme going on, and they were all spooky. So today, I'm going to be talking about spooky book covers. So I know that Halloween is over, but uh, it doesn't really end for me uh, in regards to the fact that I like reading spooky, ghostly, uh, mystery, thriller, paranormal, disturbing books. Wanted to show you all of my great covers on these books that I have. I've got some young reader books um, that I originally had bought for my daughter have recently discovered that um, I want to read them. So I'll show you the first one and it's Asylum by Madeline Rue. As soon as I saw this in the store um, it jumped out at me. It also reminds me of the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children books uh, taking on the idea of old black and white photos that look really disturbing and creepy. It sort of goes along the idea of you know, psychological, you know, insane asylum, like American Horror Story, the second season. Um, it was Asylum, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. It's, you know, creepy with the little the girl standing there and, and oh, her face is turned somewhat. I didn't notice that before. This book is about a boy uh, named Dan who goes to, uh, he enrolls in a college prep program their housing was closed, so they had to go and stay in in an old dorm, which was the former home of an asylum. So I guess a whole bunch of spooky crap goes on there. I think it sounds fantastic. I have not read it, but it's sitting on my TBR um, shelf next to where I sleep. So it's going to be coming up soon. So that's the first book. I found Liesl and Poe, and this is by Lauren Oliver. I talked about this, I think, during my Tuesday Talks video uh, a week or so ago. Originally, I found this book because this is way, way before I ever started making videos, and um, I was on YouTube and I saw a book trailer for it, and the music is absolutely haunting, and the trailer is... I just had to go out and buy the book, like, as soon as I saw it. Well, not literally, but pretty soon after. And I had started reading it with my daughter, uh, but we never finished the book. I mean, it's just gorgeous, you know? It's about a girl named Liesl, and she lives in an attic bedroom, and she's not allowed to leave, and uh, she's very lonely, and she meets a ghost named Poe, and they go on a journey together, and it's... Oh, it was funny, and it was, it had the whole like spooky atmosphere going on, but it, it's not frightening or anything. It's, well, not yet anyway. I only got about halfway through with my daughter, but um, it's cute and it's like just phenomenal. And I'll show you again how the inside of the cover is. Um, yeah. It's now become my book, really, because I, I my daughter likes books and reading, but she's not uh, quite as obsessed with them as I am. So it'll probably stay with me um, for my whole life. Yes, I just love its cover. And the next book is also a book that I found uh, on YouTube through a book trailer, and I still haven't read it either. But uh, um, it's with Liesl and Poe ready to be read. And this is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. Again, uh, the trailer for this is just wonderful. And it just made me feel so good, you know, watching it. And the story sounds really awesome. It's about a boy named Connor and he has nightmares about a monster. 
and then one day the monster shows up. I think it has something to do with his mother as well, like there's some sort of connection there, maybe she was sick or something. I'm not completely sure. Uh, I'll leave a link for the trailers for these two books so that you can watch them and gush about them and feel like you have to run out and buy the book if you don't have it already. Um, and I'll show you the inside of this book too because it's also a doozy. Yeah. I love it. The dark, the blue and the black with the moon. Oh. I love artwork like that. I love to hang it on my wall. This is also a young reader's book, but it looks creepy and I'm really looking forward to reading it. So on we go. The next book that I wanted to show you guys is Naomi's Room by Jonathan Acliffe. And I have read this book and it's a ghost story. Um, it's about, I read so many books and then I forget them. I can never remember exactly what they're about until I read them again, the backs. Does that happen to anyone? I mean, you read a book and then you know you like it and you give it a good rating, but then two weeks, three weeks later, you, you forget what it's about until you read the back again. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, this book is about Charles and Laura. They are married and they have a daughter, Naomi, and they go out shopping on Christmas Eve, him and his daughter, and he loses her in a crowd. She turns up dead, or so it seems. They can't. They find her body, but then uh, ghostly things start happening in the house, and the mother and the father hear voices at night, and they see stuff that uh, would freak me out if it was happening to me. This book was a little bit slow and the writing to me was kind of hard to follow and I felt like it was too advanced for me and then I thought, well, like, am I stupid? Yeah, the writing seemed really advanced. Uh, it's uh, Maybe it was the style of writing. Um, it seemed just sort of like old world English. Not really though, but I know that they were in England. Um, and it's not an old book. I mean, it was published in 2013. It takes place in a mansion as well, which is equally cool. And again, you know, with the lone girl standing there in the, in the misty, blue, eerie atmosphere. Uh, I have a whole bunch of books on my Goodreads TBR that I found um, that I just strictly added to my want list because I like the cover. This was one of them. Yeah, so this book was very good. And yeah, like I said, it sort of was slow and a bit, eh. like it was good and it kept my interest and I wanted to keep reading it. Uh, but then towards like right near the very end, uh, it got pretty freaking nasty and kind of surprising actually what the ending was like. So it was well worth it in the end because I was like, whoa, what the hell? So pick up this book uh, if you like good ghost stories that take place in old spooky mansions and uh, don't mind a bit of grisly gross. Yeah. All right, so the next book I have is House of Echoes by Barbara Erskine. Erskine? 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 Uh, if anyone knows how to pronounce that last name, let me know. Again, a lone woman standing in a shadowy forest. There's no house though. This one looks like it takes place in the past. As I read the back, because I have not read the book yet, a woman named Joss Grant inherits Bellheaden Hall. I guess that's a big manor of some sort. She brings her husband and her son, and it's a dilapidated house, actually. They go discovering family roots which lie in the village. Not long after they move in, uh, Tom wakes screaming at night and the woman hears echoing voices and senses an invisible presence. It's gonna be like a, a ghost story. Ooh, there's my book depository bookmark that I got. Don't you just love the bookmarks that they give out? They give you a new one each time you order. That's that one. Then we have The Kept by James Scott. And this one I believe I got from my mother. Oh, see, a house, and it's burning, and forests, and it's winter time, and 
it's so simple, but it says a lot in the cover, I think. This takes place in the winter of 1897, and the woman's name is Elspeth Howell, and she goes back to her farmstead to where her husband and her five children await her. She comes back to her house and it's all dark and the chimney's not running, um, which means that nobody's got a fire going to keep themselves warm. And some unspeakable crime has destroyed her life. So I'll let you buy the book and figure out what happens. I'm not gonna read the whole summary. Um, I haven't really read any books that take place uh, over a hundred years ago. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading this because um, I'm all about broadening my horizons at this point in my life. This one sounds pretty cool and spooky cover. So this one is a classic. I've never read anything by her. I wanted to because I feel like I should read some classics because I've never read any classics. So I have a couple of classics, and but they're kind of in my genre still. So this is We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. So um, obviously this cover appeals to me. It's spooky, it's got uh, freaky looking people and the black and white and the sketching and the black cat. Um, so I'm just gonna see what this says. My name is Mary Catherine Blackwood. I am 18 years old, and I live with my sister Constance. I have often thought that with any luck at all, I could have been born a werewolf because the two middle fingers on both my hands are the same length. But I have had to be content with what I had. I dislike washing myself and dogs and noise. I like my sister Constance and Richard something or other and Amanita Phalloids, the death cup mushroom. Everyone else in my family is dead. You will be wondering about that sugar bowl. I imagine, is it still in use? You are wondering, has it been cleaned? You may very well ask, was it thoroughly washed? All right, so this just sounds uh, bizarre uh, and I like it. I'm hoping it'll be really awesome. Um, I haven't really read any reviews as to what the books actually about so I'm just gonna go into it blind and hope that it's really good uh, but it belongs in this list because it is uh, and even on the back this is uh, awesome mm. okay and the final book that I the final book that I have is another one I bought strictly for the cover and it was the hypnotist by Lars Kepler, and I love it. It's just, oh! I mean, what's he doing sitting there looking all bald and freaky? And the hypnotist, I mean, the title alone. So um, I have the first book and the second book in this series. My mom has read them because she borrowed them. She said they were really good, uh, awesome. This book takes place in Sweden. I think it's a Swedish author. Triple Homicide, No Apparent Motive, Detective Inspector Juna Lina. He goes against the grain of the National Police and demands to investigate the murders himself. Murder mystery. Uh, it just looks so cool though. I'm looking forward to reading this and again, I'll enjoy reading it while I do this. All right, guys, so that was my spooky book covers, and uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, did you like the books? Have you read them? Uh, give me more suggestions for spooky book covers. Uh, hopefully the books will be good too. And then also, let me know if you should think I should, if you think I should continue to do Friday Faves because uh, I can probably scrounge up some more ideas for Friday Faves and we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. So thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe and uh, leave a like. It's all appreciated. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.